Indiana Jones, Indiana It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we discuss the film Indiana Jones in the kingdom of maybe hundreds of crystal skulls, <laughs> one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. Uh, this minute is so stupid. I'm Pete Mummert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gerald Christopher Cabin 13 Porter. <laughs> Special South Camp guest, Rob Brode. Hooray! Hey, welcome. We're all doing yes. the South Camp handshake from Camp Michigania on the uh, I'm not. sunny show. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Could you please turn around, Pete, while we do it? You're not supposed to know. Thank uh, you. I'm, do- I'm doing the accompanying dance. I assume you are as well. <laughs> so if I seem out, seem out of breath, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, it r- takes a Rob, full five minutes. We wanted to have you on specifically for these Still minutes uh, because of the career and your job you're in. Can you tell everybody what you do? Uh, yes, I worked with wigged Russians, uh, you know, almost exclusively. (laughs) (laughs) I work in, uh, yeah, there you have it. I work in music publishing, um, and I'm in charge of all things money, royalties, income tracking, and audits. So, uh, if you're looking for an exciting 60 minutes, you came to the right place. (laughs) (laughs) So do you know anybody in entertainment law who we could talk to about bringing charges or anything against this film against, uh, I don't know, like a character defamation, anything like that about our friend Indiana Jones, anything like that? Who do we talk to? I think to? you maybe be more concerned of charges going the other way, but, uh, oh, okay. you know, maybe don't contact <laughs> right. me. You got a point there. Yeah, that's, that's And that's our show, think. ladies and gentlemen. And that was free <laughs> counsel. <laughs> Hey, I advise you to shut this down. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we knew you were the right guy to bring on. It's out yeah. of our hands, everybody. We quit. Put us out of our misery, please. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Do you, to... guys, do you represent John Williams? Uh, no no comment. I don't think we should. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, and that, that's a hard <laughs> well, no, yes. yeah. Yes. I, yeah, no, I don't represent John Williams. Nothing I say is representative of John Williams. I do not personally or in any business sense represent the man John Williams. So no, John Williams, completely music. tell him we said hi. Just told yeah. us that he does not represent John Williams. Mm-hmm. Yes. No. Nothing I say yeah. Is, is, yeah, is on behalf of Mr. Williams. Right. Of course And that's not. direct that from clear, Mr. Right? Williams' mouth. As yeah. Is, yeah. We're assuming everything else you're saying. Quiet, yeah. John. Quiet. quiet. <laughs> no. Keep him under control, will you? They'll hear you. They'll hear you. Okay. Shh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rob, we're excited to have you here. I'm Thank excited to be here. here. I wanted to know. Jeez, uh, I, I, t- I took it over as if it were my podcast. I'm sorry, Tom. Well, you're a guest. It's okay. Well, let me, let me I do my. I got my little thing that I got to do. Okay, Damn it, your, Rob. I got to do my little thing. I got to tell you that right. you've listened to the show. You know how this works. I got to tell you what happens at the yeah, beginning the of the minute opens with this, and then yeah. the end of the minute. Well, you do it. Tell me. And not, not much in between. <laughs> Mono, <laughs> right. Monologue, monologue. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Something about a skull. Okay. This begins, this is what I wrote down anyway. This begins with Indy demanding to know what the Russians did to Oxley, and it ends with Spalco saying that whoever finds Akator will control the greatest natural force the world has ever known. The internet. (laughs) (laughs) A race of atomic supermen. Uh, Pete, I have a question for Uh you here. Um, And I I think I might know the answer just on your introduction. Um, Did the skull mess up Oxley? I think no. I I think the evidence is that the skull did nothing to Oxley. Okay, because we know, you know, academicians can be pretty weird types. Mm -hmm. We have one who regularly chimes in on our show with my sister. They're eccentric. They're pixelated, somewhat unbalanced. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And I'm thinking Oxley is regularly, but adorable. adorable. Yes. Yes. Sort of lovable. Lovably antisocial. Yeah, sure. I'm thinking that Oxley is just normally kooky. And I don't think, see, like, I don't think the name Ox fits at all. I think it would be better if it was like squirrel or something. <laughs> Nutty. Well, that Nutty. would go well with the other with the other characters in the scene. 
Yeah. yeah. Boris <laughs> Natasha squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> All I need is a moose. <laughs> I think. But I, I don't think Oxley, I think he is genuinely, of course, I didn't watch past these two minutes. Um, I wouldn't I have say something great for something great for later. But uh, <laughs> I'd say that, you know, if you go back a couple of scenes where Indiana is talking about Oxley, that uh, you couldn't get him to stop talking and, and it's so brilliant, he put you to sleep. So, but when we see him here, he seems anything but, uh, you know, sedate, the kind of talk that would put one to sleep. So he's genuinely, genuinely changed. He's living his very best life. Like he's out there dancing. I like genuinely. I think whatever happened to Oxley was good for Oxley. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think there are drug references? Like, oh, he did too much crystal, and now you know, now he, like he fried his brain. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all a metaphor. <laughs> and they call him Oxy, like Oxycontin. Like. <laughs> 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 wait, so wait, you work in the music industry. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. And I've been rewatching Breaking Bad. Uh, yeah, so I just I had somewhere else. Somewhere else. Like he's tweaking. I, I don't know. I yeah. think so. It's like he's an academic who's like, oh, some of my intellectual friends wanted me to try some of this LSD. And I gave it a shot. Just, well, and now look at me. That's I'm the thing. Like every, everything that he's doing seems to speak to a drug reaction rather than to anything this skull is about to do because like we see what it does to Indy and it seems to be nothing. Right. I know you didn't hear the background noise. You didn't hear the, the uh... <laughs> I forgot about the background noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That indicates something serious is happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's usually a, a Yahweh wind, which yeah. we, we might get to that, but that, that's what Chinese. they have. Yeah. yeah. The Yahweh. So I, I, okay. Just to be clear <laughs> as we do in these minutes, <laughs> mm-hmm. So they're in, they need Indy to interpret Oxley. So, yeah, but their their solution to do that is to make him crazy too. Exactly. In yeah, which this, case, this he broke could, this guy's brain. Let's try it on you. Well, let's let's break this guy's crazy, brain, right? Yeah. And then, but then we'll need to get someone to translate this guy's brain. It'll, it's mm-hmm. just like they're gonna have to go. It's like that Bugs Bunny thing where he, like they keep coming up to bat. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. maybe that's their plan that's their man that like this yeah. is them right now taking over the united states like one american at a time it's got a big chain you know, this is classic psychiatry you have to be you know have mental illness yourself to understand the ment- mentally ill i mean that's clearly what they're yeah. saying yeah <laughs> right yeah, they'll it's understand. Like, Oxley and India will understand each other but nobody else will so then they got to get exactly you know, well, then how are they going to relay it back yeah how are they going to relay it back you know, to yeah. the Russians, they're both crazy. They understand each other, but no one yeah. can understand them. They're just going to have to get someone else to go in. Right, right. So, so if Oxley's mind is weak, what use is he for the skull messaging? Yeah, why are they even keeping him around? Or why is even the skull messaging Oxley if his mind is weak? But how do I? Oh, I don't. The skull's don't a predator. Sh- <laughs> that makes more <laughs> yeah, sense. It, yeah. It's been grooming Oxley. It's like it only wants to talk to the weak because it knows it can destroy them. <laughs> and the He's only message candy from its white van, like she keeps yeah, talking about, exactly. like, oh, we're going to take over the world and everything and stuff. But the only message that Thank Oxley has received Oxley. from the skull is, is uh, take me back to my house. Take me back to Ac- put me back on my neck. Well, that's like the only me. message that he's gotten so far. That's see, she starts this conversation out by saying he's a divining rod. And mm-hmm. my apology to any hardcore dowsers out there, but like she starts <laughs> off with pseudoscience. And I think that kind of prefaces that everything she's about to say is complete bunk. Like, like yeah. there's no basis for anything she says. Like there's no, none of it makes sense. Like even within the movie, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's like Bella had making me watch this minute. <laughs> Sorry. It's friendship. Well, Surely. everyone's watching this minute. Like I, all the guys are looking through the curtain. It's like, there's a whole crowd. Yeah. That's Indiana Jones. <laughs> Didn't it look like they were just extras? Like they were actually on the set, you know, working on the movie and they're kind of just standing there. Like, yeah. I, I guess we'll be in it. Well, why, why are they looking in the, in the curtain? Are they, did they just want to see another old guy go crazy? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or are they all scientists? Like, are they all <laughs> like these other guys? I don't know. I feel like there are soldiers. Like, you know, she's always surrounded by, you know, a group of yeah. uh, armed men. Mm-hmm. Makes All right. Well, so, so look again. I'll repeat. If if Indy stares at the skull and the skull communes with Indy, uh, then you know, then Indy can talk to Oxley to see what the skull was saying. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. Yes. But then the skull's not going to tell Indy insane. anything. It'll just give him the language to talk to. I feel like is maybe the skull, uh. like this is one of those Prince things. Where it's, you know, Prince would, would frequently walk around with like kind of like a handler. And he would tell, <laughs> I heard a famous story about he walked into a, a music store and he said, you know, uh, to the person, there was somebody in front of them, in front of Prince and his handler. And Prince said to the handler, could you please tell the man that I would like to see the guitar up there on the wall? And the handler said to the guy who was exactly in front of both of them, three <laughs> feet away, Prince would like to see the guitar that's right there up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the skull is that sort of thing. Maybe the skull has a bit of like a, a, a diva vibe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. We'll just talk to anybody. Or we do. I mean, let me ask you, Rob, maybe in certain cases, I've often thought that like maybe Prince did that to like present any, you know, getting sued or anything like that. You know, is this like in case he ever, <laughs> I don't know, said anything wrong? He'd be like, I no, I never said that. To the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, he died without a will. I doubt, um, you know, his legal concerns that prevented him from asking for the yeah. guitar. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> but Pete brings up a good point because we, we, we've got uh, our, our main villain. We think she's nuts. We think that she like nothing that she is saying is uh, very compelling or based on anything real yeah. or that we can relate to. And I, I'm thinking about Belloc and, and Raiders. Like he finally came out with like it's a radio for speaking to God, and you're like, oh wait, R Belloc is intense. Like he's 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 going off the rails a little bit, but it was still like it's, it really was a radio for speaking to God, though. It was. You find out that it is, but even yeah. if it wasn't, it's still an object. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a valuable historical artifact that everybody's after. It's got a huge significance. Yeah, and uh, this is just a skull that this one lady says can make you see pretty colors or something. But there's no question here. Well, maybe there is a question. I guess I'll ask ask the group. Every time in these movies, the object that they're chasing actually has the power that they suspect it has. It's never like a false, you know, yeah. like a false a false mission where like, oh, it turns out it's not magical. Oh well, I guess we'll just all just go home. Like so, <laughs> right. it's like yeah. I, it never occurred to me that the skull didn't have powers or doesn't have powers. But it feels no, it like that here, and I think it would have been a much more interesting movie if it didn't have powers <laughs> yeah what if it turned out that oxy was just nuts and he led them on a wild goose chase yeah and they found out that the real treasure was spending time outside <laughs> it was like a grift you know he was, he was gonna sell the skull and somehow profit off you know it was a replica yeah well he, I mean, he, he, it. he, he finds yeah. marion so it's like everything's happy and what yeah. i haven't gotten to that minute yet Damn oh, oh big spoilers sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking speaking of uh, of love, there's another another lovey scene they took out here um, oh. in the script. Spalko rubs her hand across Indy's cheek, like gently strokes Indy's mm. cheek, uh, to try to, to, to try to get him to, like to turn his head to face the skull. And then in the movie, she's just adjusting his electrodes. Oh, Same I thing. bet she is. Yeah, I bet he wow. calls it his, like, his electrode shifting. <laughs> <laughs> But huh. then why are they why are they using I, I don't understand why they're using a preeminent archaeologist like the one guy in the world that could help them find what they're looking for if he's sane and why they're going to experiment <laughs> on him to yeah. well, let's see if his brain's strong enough that he doesn't go insane. Like why not it try somebody not else? Yeah. yeah. Try it on Mac for God's sake. Yeah. Especially I mean, if, gonna... if they're just looking for somebody I guess who can interpret what Oxley's saying. <laughs> mhm. Mm this and is, it sounds uh, like she's used it on herself. She makes that line about like uh, it, it seems the skull doesn't speak to everybody or something. Well, she's she's kind of okay. crusty. Doesn't she about sound it. hurt? She sounds genuinely yes. hurt. Yes. Yeah, she sounds yeah. hurt. And so that's that that's the supreme jilted. irony. You just can't. Yes, jilted. That's a great mm -hmm. word. No, but see, that's the that's the that's the whole thing. I think she tried to find something with the skull and didn't. She's fa she's falsely assuming that that Oxley went crazy because of the skull. And so she thinks the skull has power, but right. that's why she's disappointed that the skull has no power and it has done nothing to anybody. Yeah. I won't let go. It's like somebody, it's like seeing Phantom Menace for the first time. You're like, no, 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 no. It's a good, it's a new Star Wars. I'm so excited. Everything's great. It doesn't matter that it's horrible. No, 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 it wasn't horrible. It's really good. It's really good. I mean, Everyone's going to love dare, it. Indy, watch this movie. It's going to be great. How dare the skull not speak her? Doesn't the skull know that she's won six Lenins at the Lenin Awards? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, doesn't she? And don't we, she knows that 
like, why does anybody think that Oxley, you know, this guy, this, you know, the, I feel like saying this, this guy in higher education isn't just nuts. <laughs> higher. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, how would you, how would you trade like Oxy go like, whoop, whoop, wow. And then Andy be like, oh yeah, that means <laughs> <laughs> go turn left at the third tree. Yeah. You've seen enough movies that when you start doing, you know, caveman drawings, inscriptions on walls, that means you've got something. <laughs> Yeah, you're yeah, a genius. No, he's crazy. Yeah, he's genius. crazy. Oh, wait, is he scribbling on the wall? Uh, yes, he's got it. Is it the same thing over and over again? But oh, it, he's a genius. Let him lose. But it, if, if the skull yeah. is real and it does have power, and if Indy has a strong mind, why wouldn't this just make Indy like have superpowers? Like, why do they think that Indy being like getting powers from the skull would suddenly be something they can control even more? Like, why wouldn't he just all of a sudden be able to control them? But it's, yeah. it's like the powers are once you return the skull, though. Right? It seems like, like it, all it, anybody is getting is, yeah, like how to get it back there. Which uh, like, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you the, like, I'll tell you the way home. And if you get me there, I'll give you the power. But just me talking, you don't think that means anything. Right. And why would Indy, let's say it does do something to Indy. Why uh-huh. would he not then just be like, oh, yeah, nothing. Sorry. I guess I guess it's not speaking to me either. And then meanwhile, he knows the way to Akator and he knows everything. And or why like does he think he's going to tell him anything? Yeah, like he has suddenly some secret weapon, or he has some he can control her mm-hmm. mind. I think we're, we yeah. need to ask ourselves: Does the skull really want to go home? What, you know, is, is someone <laughs> abusing the skull at home? I mean, the skull doesn't want to go back because why wouldn't it tell Oxley exactly? Like, yes, you make a left at the tree. That's and that. Then you make a That's right. Really through, you know, like why would yeah. it drive him crazy if it really wanted to go home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah or why wouldn't it drive you more crazy so that you would have to like he like oxy decided not to bring it back he decided to hide it under the conquistador <laughs> and everything well no wonder the skull is actually torturing him then yeah it's, it's all very you, et oxley. yeah it is it's all it's yeah. aliens just want to go home it's et by way of lord yeah. of the rings or something it's like it just wants to return to its master or its neck or whatever it is, and it's thwarted at every turn. So like a, a, a good movie made stupid is what you're saying. Exactly. Tom. Wait a minute. Come back here. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, okay. So go ahead, Rob. No, go, go ahead. No, I was going to take it in a different direction, but I think the skull merits more just, I guess, discussion. Well, I was going to take it in a different direction. No, this <laughs> still merits do. more discussion. <laughs> Oxley finds the skull and he stares into its eyes. And, it, you know, staring can be a v- very intimate. So, Tom, you hate connecting with people. Yeah. <laughs> when did you have an intimate stare? Oh, God. Yeah. See, I got you. I'm staring at you now. Yeah. And yeah. he's, not, look, he's t- not making eye contact. Yeah, I know. I, he's, 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 I tend to, yeah, I'm one of those people I, I don't look at, I look at people when they are talking to me, but then when I'm talking, I don't look at them. Because <laughs> you're disgusted. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be distracted by their piercing eyes. You want to be able to, you want to finish your sentence without, you know, insulting them. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, would you please look somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> Pete, Show have you had, have you had any, uh, any, you know, moments where you've, you've been staring at someone that's just been intimate? I don't mean, you know, like, like something, you, I don't know, a moment that, uh, like, like with a with a with an alien or somebody that you're unfamiliar with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, don't count. <laughs> like, like going out more now than earlier in the pandemic. Like, kind of when you go to the supermarket and like you're talking to the the person person at the behind the counter and you're like mm. making eye contact. It's weird. It's mm. like, whoa, this is really yeah. an intimate moment. Like, I'm communicating with a human being eye to eye. And you kind of have to look at their eyes more because that's all there is. Like you're looking at the, like, what are we, is there, is that guy smiling? Cause there, is there a crinkle around the eyes? I can't tell if he's smiling. So you have to look in their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Do you see, yeah, I'm, I'm imagining you with the, I do have a club card. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. My fellow human being. <laughs> yeah. Rob, you're kind of on the Tom school, which is just, you know, get, uh, get, get, get me out of here. Have you had any <laughs> intimate we'll moment, intimate stares just like in life? Something you remember, no. like you're, you're maybe on an inner tube somewhere <laughs> in Michigan. <laughs> who who would I be able to stare at if I was on an inner tube? 
I feel like Jerry's really. referencing a yeah. specific moment where he felt he had an intimate moment with you. <laughs> you're not remembering it. Jer- yeah. No, I mean, when your hand touched <laughs> mine, sad. it was magical. But, uh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a stare, though. No. That was I, I could, Yeah. Well, it, it's better if you're looking into someone's eyes. Then they can't accuse you of looking, looking elsewhere. It's probably better if you keep your eyes <laughs> That's up. true. That is true. Yeah. True, true. true. Well, you're right. The the the, the uh, well, I was just saying. You know, the skull, the skull. Staring at it, people these is are rude. Intimate, <laughs> intimate moments. These are intimate moments, as, as well, we see. You know, it's, it's a cultural thing, though. In some cultures, you know, looking into people's eyes is the absolutely appropriate thing to do. In others, it's seen as disrespectful. And I think, yeah, yeah, without knowing challenge. the skull's culture, it's a very dangerous move to stare right into its eyes. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a good point. Could be seen as a sign of disrespect. I got a better idea. You look at it. <laughs> yeah classic jones feisty jones yeah. i've had enough I, of this jones she seems I, uh, pretty sad that it didn't work for her yeah well yeah she does yeah. she's definitely yeah. all crusty with, uh, with that line she's like yeah. oh, well, of well, course. some skulls don't like to talk to people i guess yeah i've talked Fine. to plenty of skulls believe you me <laughs> yeah yeah just well, like a, there's, skulls there's all over plenty the of mary's yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah there are plenty of skulls plenty of mary's <laughs> yeah. well, but but did the uh like did the other skulls do? Like did the Area Fifty One skull do anything? I don't. Th- we were talking about this last time. I don't. Think yeah, I can't. So I think th- I think it's yeah. got a crystal skull, but for some reason doesn't have it didn't special work. powers. Yeah, it looks pretty. You hang it in your apartment, and it, but then you why tell does she assume that, it gives that you special powers? if there are hundreds of, of other ones that they they'll all work? That I don't know. okay. Hold up. Did we just find out in this minute that yes, there's hundreds of skulls. Maybe at Ac- maybe yeah yeah. So this is, I what it now? What if there's hundreds of Sankara stones or hundreds of uh, <laughs> Ark of the Covenants? And I, I don't know. Like I mean, the, maybe it she really just, devalues like, the skulls. It does. Like there's a glut now. Yeah, yeah. But you you just need to bring one home and you get the power of all of them. Or is like are you linked to the the skull that you brought home and it's like. Other people could have control <laughs> over other skulls, and it's like a skull war. You know, my skull's better right. than your skull. Yeah. Or if she's talking about like you can control other people's minds, you're like, yeah, with one skull to rule them all. Yeah. Why or, would you need a hundred? Yeah, because then every so then could would everybody be trying to control everyone else's mind? So like, okay, the Soviets get this one skull, maybe they get four of them, and then maybe the Americans get like eight of them and then germany gets two and you know may, maybe china gets 10 or i mean it's just like so we're it's all like, it's like hungry hungry hippos like you've got you're all in your corner with your skull pointing at the other people and you've got to yeah. try to <laughs> yeah like it's all a, a showdown it's maybe they're funny. all just backups maybe she's assuming that some butterfingers is going to drop the skull and crack it and then they're going to need <laughs> some more and for the next few centuries they're going to need as many as they can get can i tell you what really bothers me though what? Why does she? Why does she call it a natural force? Isn't this the definition of a supernatural force? <laughs> yeah, maybe just because it's not like a machine, it's 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 natural for wherever these guys come from. I guess. Do we know, know they're not a machine? Like, I feel like all of this is not. I don't know. We don't really it's, know it's anything. Weird. I feel like yeah. she has a very poor grasp on science. She has an idea of what she wants these skulls to be, and I don't think yes. she's fully thought it out or proven anything. And, she's um, leading with her hype. She's assuming that her hypothesis is true and all yeah. the evidence is fitting her hypothesis. Right. I feel like that's a characteristic of all of the uh, Jones villains throughout, throughout the movies. That's true. Yeah. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. But it's paid off for the rest of them. Like they've all been right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah. That's right. In, well, I mean, in, I mean she's, she, she does have death, proof. But yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she does have proof so far that it doesn't work and that it doesn't do anything. Like she's got Oxley, who's just a babbling idiot. She's got herself, who looked into the skull and nothing happened. Like so far, she's got nothing. But and now she's, she's got still nothing a, a from true believer. Yeah, the babbling idiotness is proof of something, though, right? They're like it had certainly had an effect on him. It wasn't powerless. Maybe the power didn't, uh, you know, didn't instill the power she had expected, but it had the power to change him from a brilliant man to a bumbling, you know, bumbling idiot. Well, See, wait to me, that's so, still like they, they gave him a sedative before he looked into the skull and the sedative did that, but they're attributing it to the skull. <laughs> well, wait, he so look did, into the skull on his own? Like, yeah, before that's the what I waited. Did picture? they just, yeah, did they meet him when he was non-bumbling? No, I don't think so. 
So how do they know that this isn't just yeah, a regular how do they know ass this self? Thing? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a regular American uh, professor. This this is Oxley like <laughs> period, <laughs> period three. <laughs> <laughs> right. At yeah. the university. He gets like this if he doesn't have lunch. Just yeah. get him a sandwich. <laughs> Hungry? Why wait? <laughs> <laughs> in, in, Indy knows that's not his normal state, though. Indy could right. testify, like, yeah, that, sure. ooh, wait, which, what did you do yeah. to that guy? Mm-hmm. But is it any skull? Is there only one skull? Yeah, one skull to rule them all. Like, one, if you bring that particular skull back to the Agator, 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 yeah. yeah. if you bring that one skull back, you, you know, you will, uh, you will rule the world. Or is it like there are hundreds of skulls. Are those hundreds of skulls in, back in the kingdom, or are they spread throughout the world? So, like, if you have a skull and I have a skull, and oh. it's like a finish line, we both run. Whoever crosses the line first with their skull, <laughs> you know, wins. It gets the power. Or is it like only one skull? Like, so I'd have to obtain the skull you're holding, or I could get my own skull. I Why think we find so out it? not to ruin anything, but this is, this is like a specific skull from a crystal skeleton without a head. So I guess it's this one. But I feel like nobody that, see, knows that, that, that at this point. That sucks. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah that that sucks. Sense. So there's all these regular ass butt alien skulls. Mm-hmm. And then there's one alien skull that's a crystal skull. And it's, 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 it, we're only really concerned about the crystal skull. We don't care that much about the other alien skulls because they're Ain't not. Ain't that always crystal. the way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a true archaeologist would, Jones would care. But, you know, it's sure. kind of a beautiful thing. Just as a baby alien, everyone made fun of him for his crystal skull. And look how important he turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't an ugly duckling at all. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, she takes a Don't toot. T- <laughs> Don't touch me, guys. My skull's made of crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with him. He's got a break. crystal skull. Yeah. Wait, so you're saying the other aliens don't have crystal skulls? I thought they all had. Well, wait. Skulls. She said last time that they did. They were excited that they found. Well, this no. New so she said that the New Mexico skull. one didn't have a crystal skull, maybe. But yeah. It seems like the other ones in Akator probably do. No, she said that the they found one in Russia somewhere. Yeah. And that did not have a crystal yeah. skull, but the New Mexico one did. But they don't seem to care about it or think that it has any powers. <laughs> Even though it's magnetic. <laughs> oh, my God. So the evidence she has so far, she has three skulls. Mm-hmm. Two of them have never worked. One of them works only if you look at the evidence in a very dubious way. But she has two mm-hmm. instances of that third skull not working at all. Yeah. And but her- what, what? I mean, what's working? Defi- like, define works. <laughs> the skull <Right>. works. <laughs> it makes you... Yeah, I'm just seeing in my head. I'm just seeing news footage of the Ber- Berlin Wall coming down. <laughs> we're talking about this, like, and it all leads to this. This kind of thinking, just kind of. Eventually, it all crumbled. <laughs> well, maybe she just suffers from. You know, they say if you're a hammer, you just the world's all. Yeah, nails. everything's a nail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're a crazy Russian. The whole world is crystal skulls. Yeah, but I feel like that makes you a bad uh, scientist. Is that what she is? Is she a scientist or is she a? Like, what no one actually? knows. She I had forgot a big what, long she won, what she won the, the awards for. You know, like she did have one six. Yeah. Lines, I had six lens, but I forgot what it was for. Yeah, the Order but, of Lenin. Something. Yeah. She was Stalin's yeah. fair-haired girl. Yeah, she's got a little orphan Annie Dakota ring. Is she an archaeologist, <laughs> or is she a like suit? I thought she was an archaeologist too, but I don't know if that tracks either. You're basically saying she's really not a three-dimensional character. She's very like one. <laughs> one would never note. say that. Yeah. How, would you, how dare you? She's omnidimensional because you can, you can <laughs> read into her whatever you want. I mean, yeah. Certainly pro- she's projecting in, projecting uh, massive insecurity. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's right. She's like, very bitter. She's the only Maybe. woman, only woman in a in a male-dominated field, and you can yeah. tell that. That she definitely feels that acutely. Yeah, she might. Yeah. I mean, you know, to I don't blame her. Credit, like, of course, yeah. Yeah, she might be thinking, if I screw this up, I'm screwing it up for every communist woman scientist slash general, whatever she is. <laughs> you know, like if if I mess this up, I, I set the whole cause back uh, hundreds of years. But that sucks because what you just said, Rob, sounds awesome, and it, she's not awesome. Like I feel like. Mm-hmm. People keep saying things that make her sound like she could be awesome and this movie could be awesome, but that keeps not happening in the movie. 
Mm -hmm. I I agree. There's many points in this movie. I thought if it would have turned in a different direction, you could have had a much better movie. I think there's yeah. a lot of is it pathos, you know, for that character they didn't explore at all. Why why is she this way? Especially with all men, how did she become you know get this role? She must be very tough, uh, very yeah. smart, very you know like have a lot of positive attributes. But she kind of just seems like somehow is installed there. But in 1957, it doesn't seem like that would be a natural thing for her to have that role. So there must be something very unique about her, which isn't really besides, oh, I'm just I'm just tough and I get what I want. Like, it's kind of like broad brush. Broad I think brush it is that. Like I, I feel like it's just they took her straight out of the pulps of like she's the dominatrix from, you know, like they had the <laughs> yeah. Nazi dominatrices or the, yeah. the Soviet, you know, the yeah. communist dominatrices. And she's just that. Yeah. You have to look like how would she actually get that way in the real world? There'd be a story yeah. to tell, and and they didn't they didn't tell it. But I thought from the very moment she's introduced, and this goes back to you know before minute sixty two. I mean, when Kate was it, uh, you know, when she, when she comes on screen with that wig and the accent, it's it just like let let the air out of the movie. Kind of it's like oh really? Like that's that's where <laughs> this is going? Yeah, this is the ride I got on. I thought this was going somewhere else. Like the movie starts with those kids in the car and they're racing and Elvis is singing. That was going to be a fun movie about wild and wacky teenagers. You know, and then, and then they follow the army <laughs> guys instead. And you're like, oh, I wish they would have yeah. gone left. <laughs> yeah, what if there's a great movie going on in the left? Yeah. That's what I thought. What, what happened little, to those kids? Like they were having a great time. <laughs> that turned into yeah. American graffiti, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I have to. I, I, Pete, Pete, I noticed how fluidly you said dominatrices. God, Jerry, I'm right there with you. I never knew the plural of dominatrix. And <laughs> yes. Just and came Pete out with just, it yeah, that's effortlessly. Not, yeah. That's, that's, there's the talk it's about not an going, unpracticed there's a tongue you're saying. <laughs> I heard the story there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Follow the teenagers all you want. Follow Pete. Yeah. One time I called them dominatrixes. Oh, and you wouldn't believe the hurting they put on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need your your business here, sir. Yeah. Learn the language. Um, oh, I actually have a. Uh, I don't even know if this is a positive or it's just it's a uh, it's a it's a, an interesting thing I noticed uh, that felt like Indiana Jones to me. This is a scene uh, where we've got Indy. Uh, captured by the bad guys and there's lots of big bright lights and movie cameras filming about the, the, the supernatural thing that's about to happen. Mm, and that mm. uh, harkens back to my old, uh, that movie that I like Raiders of the Lost. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'll go on record saying I, I, I like the line. I got a better idea. You look at it. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it. That's I solid. thought it was funny. I, like I, thought that I, was I funny. love hers though. I thought, I thought hers is good too. The, it, the skull does not speak to everyone. It seems like I think that's oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, see, that is that's like a tiny bit of of human being that you get in that. Yeah, movie. that's mm -hmm. some backstory. Where you're like, oh, she's she's uh she's not all haircut and and saber. You know, <laughs> she's like she's yeah, got. Yeah. If you had a little more of that, if there was something you could hang on to, like, damn it, I really want to get the skull. This is this means something to me as a person. You know, like it's not just like my crackpot ideas that have no bearing on anything no basis in any kind of measurable fact or anything. Uh -huh. uh, if there was a person there, she might be a little cooler. This movie, though, I mean, one thing that's good about this movie, but also I think maddening, is it moves very quickly. Like, it's a fast-paced mm -hmm. movie, which makes it, I mean, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it's fun to watch. It goes fast, it's entertaining, but at the same time, it, it goes so fast that it misses every bit of backstory and depth, I feel like. Like, it just races yeah. past it. Right. Yeah, we're not only finding stuff that like, oh boy, this makes even less sense than we already thought it did. This is like <laughs> just insane how little sense it makes. But then it's also like, oh man, why didn't they do this? Yeah. The, it's, the, also, it's, it's right it, there. They just, just twisted a little bit. Yeah. So much of it seems familiar, but what felt charming in the first, you know, especially the first two movies doesn't feel charming anymore. And I'm trying to put my finger on why. Exactly. I'm like, I should be liking that. Like, yeah, that, that's about right for Indiana Jones. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. just like something just feels false about it. And I was hoping the experts could tell me, like, you know, what's the consensus and why that fails? Yeah. Because a lot of the lines are there. It's like, you know, when, when he blows the poison dart back in uh, one of the villains, I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of thing you should be like jumping up in your seat and be like, yeah. <laughs> but it's right. just like, 
It's just like, yeah, okay, that kind of reminds me of something from the first movie that I like better, yeah. Well, exactly. I was going to say, Jerry and I have had this feeling since 1984. We've been like, gosh, you know what? That looks just like Indiana Jones, but I can't quite, I don't know. Would Indy say that? I don't know. Gosh, that's weird. He's got one sleeve on his shirt. What's going on? Well, I mean, I think 1984 works okay because it's a prequel, but at some point, yeah, when you get older, you grow and you change a little bit. And if you don't mm-hmm. change at all, if you have the same catchphrases and the same, you do exactly the same thing. You, you might be sort of a one dimensional character. See, I think the first like third of this movie, which I think we've already passed, like, you uh-huh. know, I think up until like maybe they get to the graveyard or something with the with the with the darts and everything and the, and the guys coming out to fight them. I think once they get there, things start to go south. Uh-huh. But everything before that, there's ton, not everything, but there are a lot of moments where I'm like, oh, this is Indiana Jones yeah, as a yeah. father figure, as like a as a dad type guy. Not a, he doesn't know he's yeah. dad, but he's like an older Indiana Jones. And I yeah, buy that. And I like he's it. Grown. I'm into it. Yeah. 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 The, the, the interesting thing about it is I don't you, you know, they 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 in India is settled down. We've talked about this. Even mm-hmm. even even his line here, he's kind of just like you know. In the next minute, he says, you know, well, be be it's a very important. He says, uh, you know, some, something like, you know, be careful. You may get what you want. And you're like that right there. That right there is a <laughs> yeah. mature Indiana Jones. And <laughs> right, and yeah. that that that's a great arc for that character and and it makes a i, I mean that i i like that i like a lot of what they do with an older indiana jones mm-hmm. it's the stuff around them that falls apart <laughs> yeah um That's pete true. i have a question for you okay what is more powerful power over the mind of men or the atomic bomb well, I'd say power of the mind of men because you could make them use an atomic bomb. Uh huh. But atomic bombs <laughs> blow up minds. So if you have a refrigerator. <laughs> See, if you have a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a, it's like a rock paper scissors. Yeah, I'm wondering it is. what's kind of because you know that we we've they, we've seen these you know we just see the nuclear blast um right in 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 the beginning of this and oh, i have I'm, questions about that put a pin put a pin so she you know <laughs> and 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 so she's saying this that now they clearly witnessed the, the you know awesome atomic power but she's saying this right here is much more powerful than that mm-hmm. do you agree with that or i do because you could you if one side has atomic bombs and you control their minds you could make them use the atomic bombs on themselves or on whoever you want them to. Yeah, sure, but, but the that's guys a... with the atomic bombs could blow up the guys with the brains on with the, the skulls, whichever tom- first. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like who goes first. Well, but <laughs> well, yeah, you'd have to go first with the with the mind power. The important thing is everybody dies. <laughs> it's a, I think it's about using that power. I mean, if the if the goal was just to annihilate everyone else, then the bomb would be more important. But I think it's not. It's not just conquering. They want. They want to. I don't know if it's enslave. Or use the um, you know the conquered uh, toward a greater goal. You know, so that's mm-hmm. why I think controlling their minds is more important because she doesn't want to kill everyone. She wants them to work for her or act in a way that you know, right. further. She actually kind of kind of sounds like she wants to use it for good in a weird way. But well, that's next minute. So do you th- you yeah. think like like it, yeah. if you had the skull and then you could if you made people stare into it at some point you'd say rub my feet. <laughs> and that right. would be that you know that that's what you can do. Yeah, you or you could kill them. Then no one rub, then no one rubs your feet. So see, like it would be more important, I think, you know, to control their mind because if they're dead, your feet don't get rubbed. That is true. Yeah, you have to rub your own feet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Maybe they're not so crazy after all. <laughs> uh well, speaking of not so crazy after all. <laughs> oh, um, the jury's out. Oh. Yes, uh, let's just in. Up, mm. oh, something's coming up. Uh, this just in from Professor Christy Porter, also from Cabin Thirteen. Hey, um, Rob, what part oh, oh, of uh, your brain is underdeveloped? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it's a, be- it's a better question for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're too stupid to know the answer 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, taking taking the initiative to answer it yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's under Probably uh, the part that allows me to communicate well with uh, with women. Probably. <laughs> uh, Pete, what part of your brain is underdeveloped? Uh, the part that says no. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah, you, you're one of them types. Rub my, rub my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need a skull. All right. <laughs> rub my feet. my feet. This is getting <laughs> way too personal and uncomfortable already. It really is. Tommy? Um, the part that keeps me from asking Pete to do stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know he won't say no. <laughs> Uh, this might be a big surprise, but I struggle sometimes with organization. What? Oh, interesting. <laughs> I know, I you know, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're an elite it, at burrito. It's not that it's it's not that it's underdeveloped. It's that I don't want to develop it. Right. Exhibit A: yeah. Jerry's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, listen. I think we've beaten numbers, uh, minute number 62 to death. Uh, but we got, we got more of this, but Rob, I think you should come back next week. Take a little break. Think about what you've done and then come back next week and talk yeah, about 62 I, or I don't want to say no days. in the heat of the moment, because right now I feel like saying, no, that minute was so terrible. I'm like, you're going to make me, how do you think one. we feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Are we being too down on everything? Are people going to be annoyed with us? I want to, I want to, I, I hope we're having a nice time. See, this sucks. Cause I was always I, had to be like the up guy for the first three movies. All right. I'll Somebody, be next someone time. needs to carry me if I'm going to be the down guy. Well, okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the excited guy next time. <laughs> you'll see everybody come back next week and you'll hear me be excited about minute 63 uh, but in the meantime, uh, you should visit us in various places. You should visit us. Uh, join a conversation with us. Let me just say that again, like a, like an English word. Join the conversation with us over at uh, <laughs> Facebook at Indiana Jones Minute and the Listener's Crusade. That's our group over there. There's a bunch of us just hanging out, chatting about the show, chatting about Indiana Jones, chatting about various Mountain Dew flavors, the whole thing. Uh, and you can also support the show over at Patreon at patreon.com slash Indiana Jones Minute, where you can get uh, advanced access to these uh, episodes. You can get bonus episodes. You can get uh, postcards from your three uh, charming hosts. Two. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, or yeah, at least two of them and eventually three of them. I'll we'll send you a postcard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Rob will chip in. John yeah. Williams will send you a postcard. <laughs> yeah. Pete finally said no to something. And so Rob's going to step in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the meantime please have a beautiful week and meet up with us next time uh, for minute 63 of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull here on the Indiana Jones Minute <laughs>